vlog, which will come after the action. Hey, Jeremy. Mm. What is it in the bag? Oh, really? No, you're kidding. No, don't eat it. You have to eat it. I'll watch you. I'll watch you. Uh, it's a, so it's a play. It's also a metatheatrical free writing class. Free writing class where so after so we'll do the action, which is going to be 45 minutes of us writing, and those of you in the interwebs uh, will be writing or doing whatever work that you're doing today, and then we'll do the dialogue, which is us talking about your work, your work, your creative process, what you're working on, what you're doing, and together we'll we'll work to uh, answer your questions. And, oh yes, right, so those of you in the interland, interland, the hinterlands, the interweb hinterlands, um, who have a question, you can tweet it to us, and Drew's going to tell you where we tweet to. You can tweet to, tweet to at watchmework, SLP, and tweet the hashtag new play with your questions. Say it again. Watch me work, SLP, hashtag new play. Watch me work, SLP, hashtag new play. That's our Twitter address. It's our Twitter stuff. That's our Twitter stuff. So your question has to be kind of short. And we're, so we're going to work. And uh, I don't know about you. I got a lot of work to do. You got a lot of work to do today? Yeah. Yeah? I got, you, got, you guys look really, really, it's really serious today. Everyone's like <laughs> concentrated. Good. Okay, I'm going to set this timer. Drew's going to back me up with his phone because this timer sometimes does not want to work. And here we go. The work session begins.
20 seconds. Oh, we got cheated out of 20 seconds. Anybody who really wants to keep working, 20 more seconds. I'm going to pretend to work. <laughs> done yep. <laughs> yay all right that was the uh, that was the uh, action that was the action part I, I was just remembering I was um, I was in another country uh, a year about a year and a half ago and I had a tour guide and I had a, my phone and I wanted him to take my picture in various know various times you know and he was a tour guide uh, and he was so nice he would carry my big backpack and he'd say I'd say oh mr. I forget his name uh, oh sir you know please don't carry my backpack and he laughed and he said oh don't worry I carried an AK-47 or whatever big gun through the jungle so this is nothing but he was holding my phone and he would go action <laughs> and he'd get me to do things in this interesting landscape so I just remember that right now um, in Myanmar, that they also call Burma. There he was. Anyway, uh, bleh. Look at all these people. So hi. So who's got a uh, question? This is the dialogue part of the play. Usually we don't separate it like that. Those of you who are not familiar with theater, we kind of do them together. But this time we're doing, we're separating them like an egg from its yolk. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, great sneakers, by the way. What's your name? Kurt. Kurt. Kirk? Kurt. Uh, Kurt, like Kurt, okay. I, uh, I sort of play and produced it in work. Great. The little fixing, though. Yes. And a couple of characters, there's just two. Yes. One of them really needs to do something completely different in the whole second half. Okay. And I'm, I'm curious what you think about when, you know, you've got to just take take someone, a character, out of his track and put him on some other path. Right. What, is, what are the kind of things you have to work, look out for? What things you want to make sure you do? Yes. Oh, what a great, that's like a real question, Kurt. <laughs> no, really. So did you hear, Kurt, your voice is really great. He has, he's written a play. It's a two-character play, right? He's, uh, you've written it, great. You've produced it, or it's been produced, fantastic. And now you want to do, Kurt wants to do a rewrite. Right. Yes. Okay. So, and one of the characters needs to be needs to do something completely different in the second half of the play. So, and what's what do we think about that? My first question is who from where does that note come from? From where does that note come? I wanted the second part to be more balanced. His, uh -huh. his partner got a lot more of the drama from the second. Right. Half, and his story is just as good as I wanted. Okay. So it comes from you. Yeah. So the note, when the note comes from the writer, that's good, that's good. So it's not like some, I mean, producers are great, we all love them, dramaturgs are awesome, we adore them, yeah, friends are wonderful, we can't live without them, but the best p place for a note to come is from your, your own gut, right? So it's coming from your gut, that's a good sign, and you want character, we'll call him character B, to have as much going on as character A, right? Because it's a little unbalanced right now. So it's all coming from the right place. Um, I don't see a, a problem with it. What you have to do is, because it's been produced and people are probably applauding at the end, right? Yay, yeah, so that's hard, right? With each, you get more attached. <laughs> with each clap of the hand, you get more like, mm, oh, it's so good, I'm so fabulous. Right, right, yeah, good for me. So you have to step away from all of that and you're very brave. I would just say, just talk to character, we'll call him or her character B, right? Just talk to her and say, what's going on with you? And what do you want to do? Because she probably, or he, probably has some kind of mission, you know? I don't think it's bad to do a rewrite under those circumstances. When the note comes from you, and uh, when you can, if though you're using work on that play to keep you from working on something else. I hope not. Okay, well that's just, just ask yourself that question. It does need to fix. But what okay. questions do you usually ask when you have a conversation like that? Well, what do you want? What do you want? What can I do for you? <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you want? What can I do for you? Um, I don't think you're getting served here. I, I'm not hearing you in the second half of the play. What's up? Why are you, excuse me, why are you, you know, why are you gone, si why, why are you silent? You know, that kind of thing, right? 
Okay. Okay. So those kinds of questions. Just like just like a friend. Say you have a friend who like you're really tight with, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, it's nothing. I, it's okay. You don't care about me anyway. You like him better." That's what they're thinking. You know, if it's a, I'm not interesting. Right. Yeah. You know. Right. Drew, did you raise your? I have a Twitter. You have a Twitter question. Oh, this is exciting. Someone out there. Yes. Um, from Gladys Santiago. From Gladys Santiago. How much material do you tend to keep during these work sessions? Everything. <laughs> How much material do I tend to keep? I mean, you know, we have an incinerator, a huge incinerator like the public theater. And in that incinerator have burned many people. And sorry, that's horrible. That's not true. But, um, but in that incinerator burn all the pages from the, from the various writers and residents or master writer chairs which there is only one. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I keep everything. Because, uh, because you know, does anybody know, uh, has anybody ever heard of Pema Chodron? Pema Chodron? If you haven't heard of her, she's awesome. She's a Buddhist nun and she's also very funny. And she, I don't think I've ever heard her talk about writing, but what she says is, her big quote is, everything that arises is for the fresh, which means everything is helpful to get you there, to enlightenment. You know, everything is helpful. So, these pages are helpful. And these pages are actually helpful. Yeah. And so should, should your pages, because actually it's about your work, Gladys Santiago, it's about you. So, your, everything you write during these work sessions is helpful. Or like the Bhagavad Gita says, no effort is ever wasted. Yay. That doesn't mean, though, that you should stack the papers up in your apartment so you can't get out the door. So keep a path to and from the door. <laughs> Always. Anybody? Yes, Carol. I usually write sequentially. Yes. And suddenly I have a sequence, you know, a scene that I know I'm going to do. Right. Right. Remember Kate last week or the week before? She was sitting right there, a woman named Kate, I think it was, was talking about how we can write the big scene. Carol's like, I usually write sequentially, and now I'm not writing in sequence. What am I going to do? Because I might go crazy. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> You're not alone if you lose your mind. Um, just keep telling yourself the story. If you need the story in sequence to make sense, to keep your sanity, just as you walk along, tell yourself, what's the story? The story is blah, 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 blah. You know, you walk around, whatever, and you tell yourself the story. And then as you write it, who cares? You know what I mean? If you have uh, an outline or cards, you could, some people use cards and put them up on the wall sometimes. Um, when you go spelunking, caving, you have a yellow rope that you hold on to something to hold on to so you don't go crazy or you don't lose your way in the cave underground and we never hear from you again, you know? So you have something to hold on to. So what's the story? Tell yourself the story as you walk along, maybe put it on cards, and then it doesn't matter. You can write them in any order you want, you know? You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Esther. Um, I was uh, writing an opening scene and the character um, spending um, some time with the character in silence. Not a whole lot of dialogue. Right. It, um, maybe like 10 minutes and trying to trust like, or should I be out immediately in dialogue? Like I'm just going to open up with a lot more um, nuances and I'm even thinking like 15 minutes where like, you know, not being all jumpy with the dialogue and trying to Esther says so she's starting her play and her character is in silence for maybe 15 minutes. Like still silence? No, they're dead? No. no. No, they're moving around. Well that counts. We we start our 45 minutes of our play is in silence. You know what I mean? So you can, you can have silence at the beginning of your play, or in the middle, or at the end, you know? It's okay, you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to be, you know, isn't it nice sometimes like you have a friend and sometimes they don't say anything, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, and then you have the friends who are always like, and you're like, whoa, you know? 
you know, so sure, you can have 15 minutes of your play at the beginning of the asylum, and you have your actor in there, and they'll work it out, and you'll see how it feels, you know? But yeah, but all the gestures are very telling, right? Everything they do is gonna tell you something, right? That's cool, it sounds good to me. Anybody else? Yes? writing a long play and you've never written such a long a long thing a thing yeah so she's never <laughs> written such a long thing and she wonders how to do that like ah uh, how do you keep from going crazy that's like the question that's the underlying question of every question how do i keep from going crazy right so how do you keep from going crazy when you're writing something really long i would say if it helps you put an, an end point there Right? So you get in your car and you go, I'm just going to drive west. Right? Because east, you know, uh, west, right? I mean, because east you wouldn't get very far. You'd hit the water, but west, right? And so you might go crazy if you don't say, I'm going to go to where? Exactly. <laughs> well, well, but you get to pick, right? So you get to have an end point just for the sake of keeping your sanity while you're walking along right it's that rope it's really if you've ever gone caving or gone dating or whatever <laughs> that yellow rope that you hold on to that you go you know what i mean i'm not going to go crazy or if i go crazy at least i'll have this yellow rope you know which makes going crazy just so much nicer it's good to see. okay anybody else yes What's your name? Oh, Rinia. Rinia? Rinia. So Rinia's writing, and she says when she writes, sometimes she gets stuck, and she thinks like, oh, yeah, this isn't going to make any sense, that, yeah, or this isn't going to work. You know. So what are some of the things that we can do when we get stuck and you feel like this isn't going to work, this isn't going to make any sense? Yeah. You, like, <sighs> number one, know that everybody who writes, everybody I've ever met, who writes and everybody I've ever heard of pretty much goes through that kind of thing okay so no number one you're not alone so it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be writing okay that's the first thing but also uh, what we do here we set the timer and we say I'm just gonna write I'm just gonna put my hand on the page or on the keyboard and just write something anything it doesn't matter because what's happening really is you have the critical mind. That's no good. We all, we've all got it. And it's telling you what to do and what to think about what you're doing. Okay? And that critical mind is very helpful, but it comes later after you've had a draft. Right? Like Kurt, he has a whole draft. Now he can turn on his critical mind for the rewrite. So it's not a bad thing. It's just the wrong time for it to come in. So I would say just make a daily practice. Uh, and dedicate yourself to your daily practice of writing, even if it's just 15 minutes a day. That's the mo the best exercise, the, and probably the, like the only exercise I do, is write. And they know, like Jeremy's one of my students from NYU. My students know. I always say, like, what should what, what should we do? Answer: Write. What's an exercise? Write. It's the same thing. Just sit down and like, eh, 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 eh. even if it's like, eh, eh, eh. and a lot of times it is. And that just means you're on the path. Because that's what the path looks like. Sometimes. You know? Good question. Good question. Did somebody back here have a question? I didn't miss anybody. Okay. Yes. About this piece? I don't I don't know. It, I, well, I'll make it a question about you though. Watch. Let's see. <laughs> because someone asked a question about this piece last week, but maybe it's the same question. That'll be good. Mm 
No, that's why this is here. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about you. That's the thing. A lot of we all we a lot of us have difficulty staying with ourselves. You know what I mean? We, you know, we'll do anything. We'll come to a play that's set up to be a free writing class for you. And you want and, and not just you, but you want to come around and see what I'm doing. But it's not about me. It's actually about you. And that's why I'm here. I could do this at home, you know what I mean? But I'm sitting here because I want to hang out with you guys. And there's no application process. There's, the only application process is, do you have the time? You want to come on in? It's free. Sit down. You know what I mean? So it's about you. A lot of us have a hard time just being with ourselves as artists, sitting down and just getting the work done. You know, so I want to sit with you, you know, to be your yellow rope for an hour as we walk in the cave. We each have a cave, you know, and I want to be with you for an hour while you walk through the caves of your own imagination. And then, you know, you'll write things and you'll be happy. Er than you are now. <laughs> That's the idea. But thanks. Yes, Esther again, another question. Yes. Yeah, something popped up. Yeah, um, what, what? In writing, sometimes it's prompted by, but it's getting feedback. I need to go deeper, which is like this word going deeper. Right. right. It's like, <clears throat> and um, like what's deep for like, and you kind of intuitively kind of know what deep is. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, Right. So you think so Esther's getting notes about her writing, go deeper, you know? Go deeper. And she's like, Well, I know what deep is, but I'm getting a lot of notes, the same kind of notes from a lot of people, so they might they might have some validity, right? And how do you go deeper? It's like you know, I mean I'm not gonna I did it once in the Osbacher. We were doing a talk and I did this once. I was doing a talk with Oscar and I did it once. Which years ago. I'm gonna do it again. So this is like normal, right? And this, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Let me see. I, I was young then. Oh! <laughs> oh that's deep. That's deep. That's the difference, right? So what you do, I can't, I can't believe I'm, I'm still able to get up and stand up. But that's deep. I know. Right, and you went, oh, oh, right, that's what it is, right? So you want to go there. You know, not, and not every play and every story and every screenplay does that. It doesn't have to. There, and everything isn't like, right? But if you're getting that note, you might have material that might, you know, make people feel, wow, this is moving, but you're not really, really, really going there. So go there, because again, you have your yellow rope and you'll be able to come out. A lot of us don't go deep with material that needs that deep shit because we think we'll never get out again. You'll go down there and you'll be lost and you'll be like, you know, in the cave of your own mind forever, but it's not true. Okay, you develop the ability to go deep and then get back up again. And that's like, you know, being an artist or a martial artist. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That was fun. I can't believe it. I did that years ago with Oscar and he did the same thing. <gasps> what are you doing? Jumping on the stage. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Hi. Oh, you. Yes, you, you, you. Uh, my name's Denise. And, and poems that you've written? Uh, someone else. Someone else has written. Uh, historical, like someone dead? Yes. or Okay, okay. So, so you're writing short story. Remind me of your name? Yeah, Denise. 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 Go ahead, tell me again. Uh, you want to turn this with music? Yes. That you're going to write the music? Uh, okay, so it's a whole like beautiful multimedia thing based on some short stories and some poems. That, that somebody else has written. I'd say again, and this is the yellow rope thing. The writer is has died, yes. but they are still living. And they are there for you to collaborate with. Okay? 
they're there. So unless you want to do what the, some gentleman was here a, a week ago from the, I think he was neo-futurists doing something with, I think, not Lorca, but anyway, he was like, you know, doing that neo-futurist thing that they do, right? But it sounds like if you want to do that and like cut it up and throw it up in the air and make confetti, yay. But you might want to collaborate with them, work alongside them as if they were living. So really work with the writer. And I think between your, uh, your skill and talent and their skill and talent and the work that already exists, you'll find a way. Just don't, if you feel like you're trying to insert yourself into it, it's probably less than appropriate. Follow their lead, you know? I mean, like Porgy, I just follow, I just follow, I just follow, no, you just lean, you just listen. You just take their cues. They're still living. You know, you just hold their hand. They're the yellow rope. You hold the hand of the Gershwins and the Du Bois. I had a lot of hands. I grew arms. We all held hands like an Indian god. <laughs> it was great. Any more? How are we Anybody with a burning question? Yes, sir, for the Nationals. And then, sure, go. The Nationals, is that a... It's baseball. It's DC's baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, so, I've just been in the last few years, I'll write these plays. Right. And they'll have like one or two performances. Right. And then, that's it. I was just hoping you could kind of speak to a certain, like, if you've ever had any frustration in like, oh, we didn't have that, you know, the 16th performance run over two weeks or anything like Right, that. right. Yeah, so what's your name again? David. Oh, you're David. So David has written several plays, and they've only gotten like, they've been produced, but only like 16 performances, and you wanted to have a long, things to have a longer run. I would say, don't don't worry about it. We all, I mean, how long have you been a, a writer? A uh, I guess like, like six years, like every day all the time. Fantastic. So David's been a writer six years every day all the time. Uh, a real writer. A real live writer right here. And no, I'm serious, which is great. I would say that you're just on the path. You know what I mean? And there's going to come a point where you do a play, it's going to get a much longer run. I mean, some of my plays only get done at certain theaters in certain parts of the country. We can always look at what we've got and go, darn, I want more. But you're doing great. Six years every day all the time, so you're actually dedicating yourself. You're de he's dedicated himself to his practice, right? Which is awesome. And you're getting produced. It's funny, I was reading something just before I came here, and it says the master, do you know the, the Tao Te Ching? The Tao Te Ching, anybody? You know, or the, I, I think I'm saying it right, the Tao Te Ching. So it says the master, or the one who has reached some understanding, is someone who never questions the way things are, but always accepts them as they are. So the master is someone who goes, oh, okay, 16 shows, a three week run, that's good, like that. Broadway show, we opened and closed, that's good. So do that. So they kind of just kind of go with the flow, which is what it says on my arm three times, because I'm trying to learn how to do it <laughs> in Sanskrit. Submit your will to the will of God go with the flow, right? So we have to learn to be, to work hard and to apply ourselves every day, but also be okay with what's, you know, we're okay with what's coming. We're okay with what's here. We accept things as they are. And that's like enlightenment, which is like scary, but that's what it is. Thanks so much. But thank you. But keep coming here and keep writing, yes? Okay. Anybody else? Yes. One more person. Yes. How are we doing? Yes. Hi, Trace. I'm not a writer. Oh, great. Okay. Sure. So you're so you read this play and you love it and you're remind me, you're an actor or you're a producer? You're an actor and you so you wanna you wanna help him get the play done somewhere, right? Sure, sure, sure. So you've seen, have you seen this actor, uh, this writer do reading? Have you, se you've seen them do reading? Have you talked to them? Oh, oh, oh. no, but, but you're, no, but you're, but that's great. But, but you're, you're scared, but you're also very respectful, right? I mean, that's great. You have someone who's like going, gee, how do I approach a writer? I, I want to be respectful. I don't just want to go in there and say, hey, man, yo, come on, let's do your play, right? That's like, ah. we run, we run, right? 
So what you might want to do is have a little bit of a game plan where you might want to do this play. Maybe if you have contacts already with some producers, right? And then approach him and you can say, hi, this is who I am. I love your play. I'm connected with this theater and this theater. And maybe we could have a coffee to talk about, you know, it'd be great. To, you know, I'd love to help you kind of get it on its feet somewhere for a production. And the playwright is going to be like, or maybe not, you know, but most playwrights, we are playwrights because we like to get our work done, you know, you know what I mean? And be, be, be uh, as honest as you can about what you can offer and what you, of course, cannot offer, okay? Okay, that's, that, that will be very helpful. And so we keep our expectations, you know, reasonable, okay? Thank you. Any more? Everybody happy? Everybody's happy. No, everybody's happy. Sonrisa. Oh, yes, yes. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm a writer, and I write in several different genres. Yes. I love writing plays recently. I feel like short stories are serving me, and I'm almost kind of upset about that because I want to turn a lot of these short stories into plays, but I need it to be short stories. So I wanted to ask you, and have you written a novel and a play? Right. Right, right, right. So what's your name? Ava. Ava. So Ava writes in different genres. She writes plays, she writes short stories. And right now she's writing some short stories and she's upset? Is that what you said? Yeah, April. Okay, she's upset <laughs> that they're not plays. Darn, you're not a play. Yeah, that's kind of like if you have a little boy child, you know, you go, darn, you're not a girl. You know, I mean, Let's be, you know, right? It's a boy, it's a girl, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So you want to love it for exactly what it is. And if you want to adapt it, go ahead. I usually know what things are as I'm writing them. You know what I mean? They have different feels to them. Um, even though uh, elements of a play, a play might have elements of film in it. I do that a lot, or a novel might have elements of theater in it, those kinds of things. I cross a lot, but I definitely know the experience, what I want it to look like, you know, it's a, it's a novel, or it's a play, or it's a movie, you know, so it feels different. But I don't, yeah, it, we, we don't gain anything by disliking the form of the thing that's coming toward us. Imagine your friends coming toward you. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll walk the other way, or they'll, they'll, you know, they'll start doing this as they approach you, and that's, you know, so be happy, you're writing short stories, yay. You're writing, I mean, gee, right? You're getting some words down and you enjoy, you're enjoying your process. That's like the best thing in the world if you're a writer, right? Okay. That's all, that's all for today. That's all for you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot you in your orange glasses. Please. All right. All right. Um, I have to, uh, I'm just gonna put this in your hand. Oh, okay. I've got uh, one scene that needs to be rewritten in the screenplay. This is the bad guy interaction with the main girl. All right? Yeah. And it's on page 39 of the screenplay. Do we spell out why he's such a bad guy, or do we just leave it up in the air? Now, my manager wants it to be like, boom, why do we hate this guy, and we're going to take him down. So I want it to be more of an existential thing. What do you think? I, I feel said. Like it's a it's a coin. No, it's. I would say, great question. Did you hear his question, everybody? He protected so well, right? So he's got some issues on page thirty-nine of his screenplay. I love screenplay writers, don't you? Page thirty-nine, and your your manager, his manager, wants it to be one way, and he wants it to be another way. I would say, go with what you want. That's okay. my. Go with what you want because uh, because it's what you want, and you're writing it. In all fairness, though, in all fairness, throw this one, one more go thing ahead. Out. Out no, please, throw this one thing out. please go throw ahead. On, like, this is draft like six, right? So we've been around the whole thing, and at this point, I start to feel like, you know what? We've been through two directors and two production companies already. Maybe it's time to start like looking at it like maybe they're really missing. It. Now I disagree. I still continue to disagree, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, then do what your manager said. <laughs> I mean, re really, if you've been doing what you want and you're, you're feel ready to change your mind, then change your mind. I, 
I'll agree with whatever you say. <laughs> I'm just reflect no because my because it's 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 your work. And at the end of, but I appreciate you asking the question because sometimes it's really hard to know what to do. Somebody says one something, somebody says something else. If you've tried it your way and it's and you feel like it's not working, but I would bet that you've been through the producers and directors not because of what's all going on on page thirty nine. I bet that's not it. I, no, maybe, maybe we're, just, we're pretty good. We're tied. Right. It. It's just like it's just this one thing right. where the guy's going like, "Can you just write this thing for me?" Why don't you write it for him and then not put it in? <laughs> yeah. It's it's prob it's a film. It might even end up on the floor. You know, the cutting room floor. That's great scene where he tells it. Hey, <laughs> write it for your manager because you love your manager, right? And he's looking out for you. And then. Put it in and not put it in. Have two drafts. You hear the draft of it in, here's the draft of not put it in. Have it in your back pocket. Go ahead and write it. You know, it's probably gonna, you write it in like five seconds, right? Yeah, see, five seconds. It's probably already written. Yeah. Yeah, see, so it's already done. So you, you win, you win. It's great to win. Thank you for your question though. Thank you, okay. So we're gonna say bye. Thanks for coming, you guys. Yay. <laughs>